Volume 1. Chapter 18, Threatening Signs. You are listening to the novel at FameTV.com. After two days, Hannah had become completely accustomed to Mint, and was now able to gallop with the limiter released. Speaking of Jean, because it would be too hard to make one golem for each house, he created five communal horse golems. At that time, there wasn't enough materials for mining, but thanks to Jin's exclusive horse golem coma, he finished it all in a day needless to say. Jean, this horse is great it's good that we don't have to feed them a wow, more than that, their strength is really powerful. Also rather than a normal horse, there are five of these in any case, the reputation of the horse golems was good. By the way, their names are Einsweidrekotter Sink. One, two, and three in German. And four, and five in French. Jin's naming sense seemed to be particular about three characters, let's not say any more about it. Rock and the others came back. In a week of mountain hunting, they literally brought back a mountain of game. Of course, Jen was carrying it. Welcome back, dear Dot. Welcome back to Dot Sean you guys, welcome back. Did you get hurt Dot? Oh, I'm back. Mario, did you grow a little taller Dot? Yuri a fool dear, he wouldn't change in just a week, for the first time in a week, the families happily welcomed them back and they then left the luggage, immediately going to the hot springs to wash away sweat and dirt. That night they had a large feast of meat. People gathered to Rock's house and he told them his stories. Of course Jean was also invited. Geez, we sure caught a lot. After going down to the bottom of the valley and waiting, a herd of mountain deer came. It was pretty simple to shoot them. The difficult part was skinning the leather and removing the organs didn't any dangerous beasts come out. Dot. A. Only once, a forest bear had come, but it went back after filling itself from eating some mackerel although grilled meat with a bit of salt was a simple thing, the meat was still exceptional after one week had passed. If there's this much dried meat, it's plenty enough to last one winter wouldn't smoking it be good too. Dot. When Jean suggested that, smoking. What is that? He was asked back. Smoking is where you burn wood chips, and then use the smoke from it to dry the meat hoe, is that also a method from Jin's hometown? You could say that I send it fine. We have plenty of meat, so let's try that smoking so they immediately tried it out the next day. Using the carry tree they cut down from the forest of trees. He had heard that when spring comes, this tree turns into a white flower blooming tree, is this tree like a sakura tree? Jean had thought and decided to test it with this tree. The result. It turned out well. Originally, the method of smoking wasn't too difficult in itself. Because the concept was just burning wood for smoke rather than a flame, then using the heat and smoke to dry the meat. Having rubbed the smoked meat in salt, they ate the meat right there. This is delicious. It makes me want to drink some alcohol you drank plenty yesterday, so no you don't dot. Such an argument was exchanged and most of the meat was smoked. In the crowd, Rock was only one with a glum look. Having noticed it, Jean approached Rock and called out to him. Rock.san, what are you brooding about? Dot. Jean, huh? I had a bad feeling for how much mountain deer we caught, I was thinking about that so, did you think of anything? Dot. A. I thought of several things thereupon Jean gave him some advice. At these times, if you let someone hear it, then there'll be more ideas to settle it I see. Then, can I have you listen? Dot. What's wrong? Dot. Their young who went together mountain hunting came over, Rock began speaking to the two. I was thinking about the reason for why those guys were on the verge of moving, first, a problem with food that's true, if there's nothing left to eat then they'll move to search for some young knotted. Second, when they're being pursued by an enemy. That would be a pack of rock wolves certainly, they would run away from their natural enemy Jean also agreed with the reason. Third, for a herd of mountain deer, in the case the herd grows too big, a young deer would make another herd, and they would separate to live however, from all of this time's game, there was no young deer yang presented a problem with this idea. A, that's right. That may happen sometimes by chance, however the most likely one would probably be being pursued by an enemy is the possibility for food low dot. Jean asked Rock who nodded, A, A. From the feeling of what we saw, snow hasn't appeared in the remote mountains where the mountain deer are yet, and the greenery has yet to change from the usual. 
I wouldn't think it's a shortage of food which would mean, it would mean that something, some beast were pursuing them. Then, Rock leaned forward, we can somehow manage mountain deer, but a rock wolf is troublesome. They're nocturnal, and their attacks in packs are difficult Jean, have any rock wolves attacked the village before I tried to ask. And Rock shook his head, no, I haven't heard of it since I was born. However, it happened once in my grandfather's time I see, folding his arms, Jean pondered. Rock had therefore, because I can't decide what to do, I was thinking about talking to everyone to come up with something aniki, then shouldn't we send out a scout to see dot? Yang said. Scouting huh? That would be right. This time we will need to go much farther back and see. Yang, you say some good things once a year Chia, that doesn't sound like a compliment well then, we should tell the village chief about this Jean said, and Rock nodded, well let's do that that night. A discussion was held at the village chief's home, they were deciding who to send from the village for reconnaissance. For preparing a countermeasure of the dangers, Jean placed his opinion in. Of course, the plan included the horse golems Jean made. It was decided both Rock and Yang would use the horse golem for scouting. Departure was in two days. In that time, the two would get used to maneuvering the horse golem. And the next day, the two practiced. Oh, Awea, Dada using the accelerator too much, the horse golem reared up and shook him off. Jaya he was thrown forward after suddenly stopping from a gallop. But though they were covered in wounds, they were both able to master maneuvering a horse golem in a day. Well then, I'll be going dear, AA absolutely don't act recklessly ought. 2. Chan, be careful the atmosphere was more tense than the last mountain hunt, the two scouts rode the horse golem sign and spy, and headed off to the mountain. Volume 1. Chapter 19, Weapon Development. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. The village had sent out scouts, and discussing if there was anything else he could do, it was decided he would make a fence for the field. With it, the crops would be protected from harmful creatures, so making it would not be pointless. Cutting down trees, producing logs, he covered the perimeter of the field. The work progressed quickly with the help of the villagers in addition to Gon and Jen, as well as the horse golems Dre, Cotter, and Sink. It was a speed that one would call abnormal if they were to see it all. Day 3 After the Departure of the Scouts Ha! <laughs> I somehow made the shape Jean helped out with the work by cutting the trees into logs, with engineering magic, but the number of necessary logs to make was done, and he now had some time for himself. Just in case. I want a weapon Jean thought. Right now the materials are scarce, so making a special weapon is unlikely. At best would be an edge tool made out of adamantite. Well, I don't want it to go to waste, shall I make an axe and nada? He decided to make an edge tool to use for his usual livelihood. Although there wasn't much left because to make the horse golems, iron was used for the body and adamantite for the exterior, so he could not make much. But he was still able to make 10 axes and 20 nadas. All that's left is a weapon for myself, Hadot. Jean could not boast as his physical strength and athletic ability were low. Compared to the men of the village he would be the lowest level. Therefore close combat is unreasonable. Although, he was also unskilled with the bow. After all it will have to be so Jean muttered and began making a water gun. It was a pistol model with a large tank attached type. Onii.chan, what are you making? Day after day, Hannah came to Jin's workshop, though it's really Hannah's grandfather's workshop. Yeah, Hannah. I'm making a water gun water gun. Dot. To begin with, in this world there's no such thing as a gun, so saying water gun would not get through to her. Well, just take a look since the structure in itself was not too complicated, he immediately completed one. It was a water tank attachment model. For Hannah who didn't understand it well, this here, you put water into it, then you hold it like this, then pull this trigger, chew the water flew out. Wow. It looks fun but. To people with the exception of Jean it was merely a toy, so he decided to give the water gun to Hannah. Though this is really something to play with in the hot summer but still, thank you. It's really fun but. Hannah delightfully received the water gun and went out to play with it. With this I'll have to make some for the other children Jean realized, so he made 10 more water guns of the same type. 
with a thing of this degree, after making it once he could easily mass dot produce it. Incidentally, because there isn't any plastic, all of it was made of muscovite so it was light and hard to break. After that, for his own weapon, he increased the capacity of the water tank, and with two pistons it raised the accuracy. He then made two of the type where the main part of the water gun without the water tank could fire water. If this is used together with Jin's engineering magic water jet, it would be a fearsome weapon. But I still can't protect the whole village feeling at peace is forbidden, was what Jean warned himself. After that, Kurt and Mario who found Hannah playing with a water gun came over, needless to say they were all provided water guns. Then a peaceful two days followed. And on the third day, the scouts came back. Oh. Rock and Yang, you're safe. Dot. A. thanks to this horse after the two had a short break, they began the report of the scouting in the village chief's house. At first there weren't any problems, the point that there was no problem with the mountain deer was made. From there we advanced further back for a day, but not much had changed. Then, we went around to the west a little, they had been going straight north, so they changed course 90 degrees to the left. Around there nothing had changed. We felt relieved, and once again headed north. And then, what is it? Dot? We stumbled upon a place with the bones of mountain deer rolling around what? Dot? Feeling that it was dangerous, we mounted our horses, and then, a big wood bear appeared. Looking at it, it was dragging a mountain deer still dripping in blood a wood bear. Dot. A. So, listen, and don't be too surprised. What? Dot? For that big wood bear, there are ten in total that appeared there no way to. Whose cry could that have been? That cry spoke the feelings of all that gathered there. A wood bear was a dangerous beast that could be barely hunted with three or four skilled hunters. And to say there's ten. Why, in such a place, normally a large herd of mountain deer would not come south, so then why would the mountain deer come south? The mountain deer and wood bear live in a remote mountains, while Cana village is in the back of the mountains, and the mostly vegetation. Less valley is in between, therefore there was almost no threat of a beast for Cana village. But now that the mountain deer had crossed over to this side of the valley, it would be likely that the wood bear would also come in pursuit. That was the conclusion made today. So Jean, just in case, I made us some sturdy axes and not us. Please come and take it later saying that, the village chief, a, eh, I see. Jean, you being here really help. Well then, Jeff and Tom, go and get it with Jean. For now I'll take care of it understood so with Jeff and Tom, Jean returned to Martha's house, and piled up in the workshop, Jeff carried the axes while Tom carried Nada's. Jean reported to Martha in the house about the contents of the meeting. I see, so the mountain deer and wood bear may have come to such a place. I'll need to tell Hannah to be careful that's right. For the time being the mountain to the north is dangerous so don't go there he warned Hannah, un. But is the river fine dot? There was little danger for the Arum River to the south. The children would act unreasonably if he were to say no for everything. Jean knew such things from seeing the small children from the orphanage. Saying that the river was fine, Hannah went to play in the river with her water gun. After that, it was decided to monitor the North Mountain every day in turns. But after two days, then three days, nothing abnormal happened. When the villagers began to think that they were worried too much, it happened. After breakfast, Jeff who was on lookout duty found a cloud of dust coming from the North Mountain. Looking closely, there was a large herd of mountain deer coming down from the mountain. Oh I. Mountain deer are coming down from the mountain. Dot. He hurriedly informed the village. The village chief and Rock, as well as Jean, came out to see it. This is, their movement looks like they're being pursued by something Rock said while stroking his chin. If it's the wood bear, then they'll show up a in a little bit, the village chief agreed. If that's the case, first we need to lead the mountain deer in another direction so they don't come to the village everyone agreed with Jin's opinion. So Jean, Rock, Jeff and Rick mounted a horse golem and decided to lead the mountain deer towards the forest to the west. Weary going dot. With Rock leading, and after that is Jeff then Rick. Jean was the rear guard. Be careful with voices of worries to their backs, the four horse golems quickly grew smaller and smaller. It'll be fine, the other party this time are mountain deer. 
Now, go inside your houses the village chief tried to relieve the worried women. Onii.chan, Hannah stared in the direction where Jean and the others faded away till the end. Volume 1 Chapter 20, Herding You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Okay, around here should be good rock was traveling as the lead, seeing the terrain he made the decision. If it's here, we should be able to divert the herd of mountain deer it's impossible to divert the herd perpendicularly. Therefore, they would have to have them turn in a slow curve. And the optimal terrain for that was before them. It was about a two-meter ramp. Though you could say it was a cliff that did not rise steeply, still it could not be called a slope. If guiding them here goes well, their course would change to the west, after that they would just run straight ahead. Listen, us four people will need to maintain a distance, we'll successfully guide the deer by keeping in a line. Let's go with some fighting spirit. Dot. Oh dot. Jean and the others headed towards the cloud of dust in the distance with the horse golems. Their distance quickly shortened. Okay, turn around. Then we'll slowly run once those guys come. We'll need to match their speed to keep up with the deer. And then we'll shift them west little by little. Dot. Because he had wanted to be a knight, Rock's instructions were precise. The herd of mountain deer came. The four men smoothly maneuvered their horse golems, matching the speed of the herd. All right, that's it. Let's keep this up. Dot. They could cooperate because the horse golems could change their speed with an accelerator. If it was a real horse, the cooperation so far would require a considerable amount of training. As expected of Rock. San Jean maneuvering Coma last in line was impressed. Although there wasn't anyone close to him in crafting, such strategy would likely not be possible for Jean. We'll push a little more to the right here. Dot. To Rock's instructions, the horse golems shifted their course to the right. The herd of mountain deer accordingly shifted their course to the right. Keep going and we'll reach the place from before the group moved forward to the 45 degree ramp from before. The leading deer did not like the ramp and diverted further to the right. That's it. If it goes on like this they'll be diverted diverting the herd parallel to the ramp, they moved away from the village. Having distanced enough away from the village, all right, it'll be good now. Let's go back. Dot. So as to not stimulate the mountain deer, the four men returned to Cana village by drawing a large arc. They were no longer worried about the mountain deer heading towards the village. As expected of Rock.San when Jean said that to Rock in line, as expected of Aniki. Who would have thought it would go so well? Dot. Indeed the other members also unanimously praised Rock. Stop it with all that flattering. More importantly, we need to decide about the other dangerous beast entering the village. Let's hurry back. Dot. Seeming uncharacteristically embarrassed, Rock pushed on the horse golem accelerator, speeding up towards the village. Jean and the others followed after a little behind. In the end no further unusual events occurred, once again a lookout was placed and the day grew dark. Since the guiding during the daytime would make one tired, Jean quickly fell asleep. However, around midnight, a big rumble woke him up. W, what dot a going outside curious of what it is, the other side of the north mountain shined red. The light grew paler while looking at it, soon disappearing. Jean somehow had an idea of what it was and he felt a cold sweat flowing down his back. I wonder what that was. Dot. What in the world was that light? Dot. It couldn't be the mountain collapsing, could it? Dot. The rumbling had awakened everyone, and seeing the same red light, they anxiously murmured. Magic. Explosion, though a person who can't use magic could not feel it, Jean had clearly felt it. Some or some, something possessing powerful magic was brought down. Or perhaps a core was destroyed. A core is something a demon possesses, it is the root of their magic. Because it controls all their magic, when that magic is destroyed and the magic power rampages, it causes an explosion. However, if it's on that scale, how frightening of a demon could it be from what Jean had judged, though it wouldn't be a dragon. It would be a demon possessing an extremely close amount of magic power. The opponent to defeat such a demon. The current Jean would stand no chance against. Is there something I can do with Water Jet? Even if Water Jet is strong, only Jean could use it. 
For example, if there were multiple enemies, it is unthinkable for him to be able to protect the entire village. This is really bad, huh? But there was no option of escape for Jean. He did not want to throw away the village that was like a second home and escape. A shelter, huh? Dot. The conclusion Jean came to was a shelter. For an emergency, all the villagers could take refuge in the shelter he made. I need to start immediately Jean began making the shelter without saying anything to anyone because he did not want them to worry. The location was a rock face in the village outskirts. Calling the golems Gon and Jen, he issued them instructions. Gon, Jen, dig out a big hole here. Enough to fit all the villagers and acknowledged the two began digging immediately. Making the hands of adamantite paid off, and they easily dug through the hard rock. That's it, dig it more deeply he wanted it at least 10 meters deep. The dugout rock is compressed and hardened, and used to reinforce the interior of the hole. With that, the rock around did not pile, and the digging was done efficiently. Though it would take some time being dug diagonally, it would surely become easier to use. Alright, that's it. Slowly dig out the living space. The height of the ceiling should be about 3 meters while reinforcing the walls, Jean continued issuing instructions. With such harsh work, even the golems became damaged, and so as to not slow down the work, Jean immediately repaired them. It was soon dawn. Jean decided to return to Martha's house for the moment. Gone and Jen continued to work. Good morning good morning, Oniai.cha. Seeing Jean, Hannah's eyes rounded. What's wrong Oniai.chan? Your face looks terrible, he was told and Jean looked at the reflection of his face in the water, with bloodshot eyes, and dark circles under his eyes. Of course Hannah would be surprised. I.A.A., I didn't get much sleep last night, then Martha came and the same as Hannah, she was surprised seeing Jin's face. Jean. What's wrong? If something happens to you now, what will the village do? Dot? Eh? With that frighteningly angry shout, Jean looked at Martha in surprise. You, do you not understand it yourself? The scouting, the fences, and defending against the mountain deer yesterday, without you, would we have been able to do it? It is because you are here that everyone can feel at ease do you mean, me dot? Aa that's right. You are already a splendid member of this village. It looks like you're trying to do something yourself, am I right? In this village, we all share our hardships and joy with Martha saying that, involuntarily the corner of Jin's eye grew hot. Thank you very much. I, Martha pushed Jin's shoulder, you look like you're lacking sleep. Saw, hurry up and sleep. You'll feel better with a little sleep with that said, Jean once again, thank you very much said his thanks, and dropped on his bed. Oniai.chan, to the worried Hannah, Martha. Shh, let him get some sleep now. When he wakes up we'll give him warm porridge to eat said, and Martha led Hannah out of the room. Five hours, Jean soundly slept, he ate breakfast and lunch at the same time, then rushed back to the digging of the shelter. Half of this was to hide his embarrassment. Quite a bit has been done, the operation of Gone and Jen somewhat worsened with Jean gone. Jean immediately repaired them, then checked the inside. About 8% of the plan seems to be done. All right, at this rate I'll make it in time however, the time for this hard work to be in vain came. Jean. So this is where you were. Trouble. Dot. Rock came flying over out of breath. Rock. Dot san, what is it? Dot. Tia that is, from the North Mountain, from the North Mountain. Dot. Something unbelievable is coming. Eh? No way. Dot. Was it a strange looking monster? Or was it a huge demon beast? Anyway, have a look with your own eyes, so he stopped with the shelter for a moment, taking along Gon and Jen. Jean came to the protection fence at the north side of the village. Oh, Jean. That, what do you see? Dot. They're in the direction where the lookout Tom pointed. Ed. Dot. A girl wearing a blue one-piece and a white apron dress. Her silk black hair fluttered. That is, the girl finds Jean in the far distant, then in an instant the figure blurs and, father dot. The next moment Jean was embraced. And then. Father dot. The voices of everyone faded away into the sky. Volume 1. Chapter 21, Chat 1. 
The Wandering Automata. You are listening to the novel at FameTV.com. After Jean was sent away by the warp gate and lost somewhere, the automata also used the same warp gate to search for Jean. A moment of malfunctioning, and the automata was sent above the sea. Splash, and then the automata sunk. Having a body relatively the same as a human body in weight, she should be able to easily swim, however the materials for the return warp gate were heavy. The weight was about 20 kilograms, and the automata dragged it underwater for nearly 30 kilometers. However, she was not an ordinary automata. Jean constructed her without restraint, so to speak, she was a super automata. Her physical strength was tens of times that of a human, and her stamina almost infinite. If she moved her delicate limbs, she would be able to effortlessly get out of the sea. This place is, looking over into the far distance, the silhouette of an island could be seen beyond the horizon. The automata began swimming towards there for now. Wearing clothes and also carrying 20 kilograms of luggage, the speed exceeded 60 knots, 111 plus km slash h. There were probably no aquatic creatures faster than her. In an hour, the automata arrived on the island. Though it's an island, it was fairly big. This is, the island where the laboratory is. No, it can't be, if where she landed was where she departed, the island where the laboratory is, it would be quite surprising. Because the island she knew was a much more smaller island. The island from her memory is a volcanic island, with a mountain towering at the center of the island that always puffed out smoke. That is, now without smoke, its height was taller than 1,000 meters. Its height above sea level exceeds 3,000 meters. She could see snow on the surface of the summit. It might have raised after 1,000 years she murmured with an expressionless voice and headed towards the direction in where the laboratory would be. Walking through the open forest and meadows on the island was simple. Because it was not the tropics, there was no dense forest. There doesn't seem to be any large animals she saw insects, birds, and also small mammals and reptiles, as well as amphibians. The organisms had not changed much from the original island. The laboratory was all over in the plateau of the island, it was underground. From the time required so far, the automata roughly understood the size of the current island. It's increased by more than 100 times, well, I don't think it's an inconvenience originally, it was around the area of Mayakajima of the Shichido Aizu, but the area is now about that of Shikoku. That is over 300 times more. However, the automata advanced without particularly caring about it. Then she arrived at the entrance to the laboratory. Though it was covered in ivy, the original resident, the automata was able to immediately find it. Before her strength, the tangled ivy was no more than a weed on the roadside, and opening the door quickly, the automata entered inside. Right, once again not knowing fatigue, she got on the warp gate once again, causing it to malfunction again. This time, the automata arrived in a desert. So it's a desert. Now, the direction where people are is, that way she moved proceeded to move towards where she could sense a little magic power. Not knowing fatigue, she faced the scorching day and freezing night, finally arriving at a town in four days. Father, does not seem to be here not mistaking the magic Jean used to make her, she determined that Jean was not here. There should be a warp gate to return to the laboratory set up somewhere around here inside a cave halfway up a rocky mountain. Far away from the town, there was a warp gate set up there. A boulder sealed the entrance, so strangers could not enter. Furthermore there was a protection barrier. Well, using a function that distinguished magic power, it could not be used except by Jean and other authorized people, including the automata. Well then, transfer and so the automata had returned to the laboratory. The third transfer. This time arriving in the middle of a wasteland. Seven days to a human settlement. Returning back to the laboratory with a warp gate set up nearby. The fourth time was a land inhabited by demons. Most of the demons ignored the automata, some came to attack, and were helplessly repelled. Among them were the sham dragon species. The hide and wings, fangs, and bones seemed to be good materials. So they were collected and with the set-up warp gate she returned to the laboratory. After returning, the materials were classified and stored to be used at any time. And like that, the automata without thinking that Jean was dead, 
went out to search for him over and over again. And now, not counting every time, she no longer knew the amount of transfers. This time was a place with snow. With the weight the automata carried, she buried into the snow. The dry snow, powder snow gave no resistance, and she wasn't likely to get out no matter how much she tried to move her limbs. It can't be helped, heat dot. The body of the automata grew hot. Controlling it so it was at a level to not affect the luggage she was carrying while she melted the snow. Although it took time because the parts of the warp gate are weak to heat, she was somehow able to successfully get out of the snow after a whole day. Now then, where is this dot? She climbed on top of a rock and looked around. It looked quite like a high mountain. The snow should decrease if I descend. Though, which way should I go, perhaps because of the range, she could not sense the presence of human magic power. This time I should ask to strengthen this area function the function to search for Jean needs to be strengthened, but it can't be done without Jean, so first she needs to search for Jean, and therefore it's a situation that goes around in a circle. Going south should be safe the season is winter, so she determined that it was better to head towards the south than to the north, and descended down along the ridge to the mountain with little snow. Sometimes the wind silently blows down, and it takes time for heat for when it is undone, so it took three days to arrive to a point with little snow. Now, before her eyes was a 3,000 meter class mountain. Looking back, the mountain she descended was a glacier 6,000 meter class mountain. This will likely take some more time. A place where the warp gate can be set up should be a little bit beyond here. The automata headed towards the 3000 meter class mountain. Though, it wasn't necessary to honestly cross over the summit, in any case she headed towards the saddle between the mountains. Still in the vicinity of the ridge where the fallen snow reached over 1 meter, it took two days to complete the second mountain. There shouldn't be any problems after this finished with the 3000 meter ridge. All that remained was a rocky mountain of less than 2,000 meters. The automata intended to set up the warp gate up around the summit. Without any snow, she climbed up after half a day. The day had already turned dark after reaching the summit, but it did not matter to her as she could see in the dark. The summit she climbed up on was wide, and there seemed to be a cave that looked good to set up the warp gate. That place looks good the automata approached it. Then, she flew far back and fell. Looking over to the place she had stood, something large gouged out. Hecatonchires is it dot. It was a giant with a height of 20 meters and 100 arms. Climbing up the slope from the opposite side of her, it suddenly threw a boulder it held. Is it a demon-type magic power that it has stored inside? That must be why I couldn't sense it even now the automata calmly analyzed her opponent. A giant-type demon, the amount of magic it can't use is large. Instead, it used its large body, and the magic inside is consumed to maintain it. Therefore the magic power that leaked out was very small, and she determined that she could not perceive it right now. If not for the luggage on my back, it would be an opponent I could face up front. It can't be helped the automata murmured her resignation, and raised the operation of what had been 5% of the ether converter up to 20%. At the same time she raised the operations of the mana drive, her magic power was immediately refined. And then. Mana explosion. Dot. She threw her strongest attack magic. The output is 20%. It crashed into and engulfed the Hecatonchire's own core, causing a huge explosion, and that large body was extinguished in an instant. The advantage of this magic is that it is possible to extinguish only the opponent's magic power. There is no effect on the terrain in the vicinity of the summit. The cave is also fine. Suppression complete. Although I think it's a little bit wasteful, it couldn't be helped. Besides that the materials left behind could be useful, so she felt it was a little wasteful to completely extinguish it, but there was something more important to her. This magic power, without a doubt its father finally coming here, she was able to sense Jin's magic power. I need to hurry up and set up the warp gate in the cave of the Hecatonchires she just suppressed. The automata went to set up a warp gate. In the surroundings were the bones of the prey of Hecatonchires, the wood bear that were scattered and thrown to the, the bottom of the valley. Carefully constructing the warp gate, she confirmed its operation. When complete, she used it once to return to the laboratory, then immediately came back again to get a feel of it. 
all of it was for the sake of Jean. In the event that something goes wrong when Jean uses it to return to the laboratory, the automata itself would destroy itself. It was dawn when everything was completed. The automata hurriedly descended the mountain, crossing over and beyond another low mountain. While crossing the low mountain, a small village could be seen. Near the fence that stood on the outskirts, it was the figure of the person the automata wanted to see. She had found the figure of Jean, and she let out an output of 100%. It gave her a speed close to the speed of sound, and she moved a distance of more than 100 meters in an instant. And then, before the automata, father dot. Searching for around six months, there stood the creator with a face of astonishment. Volume 1. Chapter 22, Father and Daughter. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. You must have been through a lot. Jean was now hugging the automata and patting her head. Ah, it seems you're in the middle of something, but could you explain it to us so that we can understand? Finally irritated, Rock called out. To that voice, the automata separated a little bit from Jean. My apologies. I have been searching for my missing father for a long time. Furthermore, for those words, Jean momentarily interrupted, No, not here. Hmm. How about we talk about it at the village chief's house? Would that be fine? Rock.sand. Aaa, that's fine. So, were there any dangers in the mountain? If you mean the mountain from which I came from, there were no dangers. Although Hecatonkires was being a hindrance, so I exterminated it. Aaa, I see. Then that's. Go. Hecatonkires. To Rock's knowledge, Hecatonkires is a monster that usually takes a squadron of people to subjugate. Besides Rock, the village residents did not know that so he was simply glad that the danger was gone. Not Jean but that girl, is unbelievable, Rock muttered and followed after everyone after falling behind a little. Jean glanced at the automata, you, right, I didn't give you a name yes, father hey, that father thing, because it was a male who created me, it is appropriate I call them father aa, so that's it Jean could somehow understand that, that is to say he was completely convinced. Then my predecessor would be mother yes. Adriana Balbora Sisi is my mother Jean felt that the automata was considerably like a human. It was because of the transfer of Jin's knowledge. Jean could vaguely feel it. If that's how it is, it will have to be a name, after Jean thought for a little, okay. From now on your name is Reiko for Jean it was quite a decent name. This is because he heard from the director of the orphanage that his name, Jean, was a character take from Jinjirikishin. And like that he chose a character for a girl among the five characters, it was nothing else but that. Yes. Thank you very much. From now on I am Reiko, while having that talk, they arrived at the village chief's house. Jean told Reiko to keep in mind one thing. Listen Reiko, leave the things about the warp gate a secret he turned around and whispered that instruction to her so other people could not hear. At that time, the village chief Gebeku came out from doing something at the table. What are you all here for? Dot. Rock who was behind walked out to the front, and so the story about Reiko was summarized, finishing that he wanted the full story to be heard. I see, if you say there's no more danger then that's good. Come on, step inside thank you very much so there was Jean, Reiko, the village chief, Rock, Tom, and the other men. And furthermore, the people in the village that had their hands free came in succession. Thanks to the wide living room of the village chief's house, it was now filled with people. Well then, let's hear your story the village chief started. Then I'll speak first the first to begin talking was Jean. This child is Reiko that my predecessor made, and an automata I repaired. It seems she has continued searching for me after the warp gate malfunctioned and sent me here yes. Because the destination of father was gone, I, after that in response to Jean. The automata briefly explained what had happened till now. Of course leaving out the details of the warp gate. Though it still caught the interest of those who listened. Is what has happened after the end of Reiko's long story, no one spoke for a while. Everyone admired the loyalty of Reiko, sympathizing with her hardship, and were amazed of her strength. I see, so it's that Hecatonkire's fault that the mountain deer came here fleeing from their habitat when Jean said that. The people around came to, t, then there won't be any more dangers. Dot. Yes, all the wood bear were eaten by the Hecatonkires aa, that's good. 
In the end, we profited from the large quantity of meat from the mountain deer we caught still, Reiko was it. You don't seem different to a human. But defeating the Hecatonchires with your form is amazing to come all this way to look for Jean who made you, makes me want to cry with those unanimous exchanges, now with things put in order, okay, everyone, now that you know, disperse. It will be good if you all return home and give peace of mind to your family the village chief concluded, and everyone scattered. Jean and of course along with Reiko, return to Martha's house. I'm back welcome back Jean, what, who is this child dot? Welcome back Oni.chan. Martha and Hannah were both surprised when they saw Reiko. To those two Jean, let me introduce you. This is my automata named Reiko. She came searching for me when I went missing so he introduced. Nice to meet you, I am the automata Reiko. Father has been indebted to you, I give you my gratitude father. As expected the two were surprised at first, but after hearing about Reiko's hardship with searching for Jean, Martha admired her. On the other hand, Hannah's eyes looked towards Reiko with unease. At that time, Jin's stomach rumbled, well, it's already afternoon, so let's hurry and have lunch. That Reiko.chan over there, is there any food you dislike? Martha asked while heading towards the kitchen, no, I am an automata so I do not eat Reiko answered. Martha once again made a surprised face, I got I see. Then I guess three servings will be fine she said heading towards the kitchen. Jean, Reiko, and Hannah remained. That Hannah timidly asked Jean. Oni.chan, are you leaving here? Ed. Dot. Because Reiko.san came to take you home right. Dot. Hannah said with her eyes welling with tears. To that Jean, nope, at the very least, I'll be here until spring really. Dot. Besides, even if I leave it's not like I won't come here again. I'll come by now and then to visit really. Honest dot. When Hannah heard that she looked visibly energetic. Honest, I promise I'm so glad, Hannah was really delighted and smiled. Right then, Martha came back with bread and soup for lunch. Now now, it's time for lunch. Reiko dot Sean, are you really fine with not eating dot? I'm fine. Thank you for your concern so the three people Jean, Hannah, and Martha had their lunch with a little delay. While eating, Jean talked about how there would no longer be danger from the mountain. I see. I can feel at peace with the danger gone Martha seemed relieved. After lunch, Jean took Reiko to the workshop while Hannah took a nap after the meal. Well then Reiko, could you immediately go and get the materials for the warp gate? I want to confirm the matter of the danger finally being gone for everyone yes, I understand. I'll immediately do so Reiko says with her black hair fluttering, and she begins to run like the wind. Well then, I'll make preparations to set the warp gate here he called for Gon and Jen who were on standby at the back and had them dig a hole, in the corner of the workshop. This time he was not making a shelter but a small room. Jean felt it was about an eight tatami room. It was soon completed. He made a wall, floor, passage, stairs, hardening all of them with magic, reinforcing them, and the entrance was a door he didn't really know of. Eventually he would put up a magic barrier, but first he would go back to the laboratory once. If he can go back and forth from the laboratory it would be easier to make things compared to now. I have just returned Reiko came back with the materials in about an hour. Hannah was still taking a nap, it was indeed quite fast. All right. Let's immediately set it up he planned to set up the warp gate before Hannah woke up and came to the workshop. Jean hurried focusing on completing the basement. Connect this to that, assemble this, and combine these Reiko who had already done it many times had the main warp gate set up. Because this is a self.sufficient magic power type, it will be ready to use. With this simple barrier, if the wavelength of magic power is not the same as father it cannot be used will you be able to use it Reiko? Yes. Because father poured his magic power to activate me. My wavelength is the same as yours father is it able to take along other people. Dot. He may have heard things like that. For this kind of thing, Jean should have the knowledge for it, but having to look it up in his mind would take some time. It is fine if they are in physical contact with father or me so it'll be fine by holding hands yes, alright. Let's go back once tonight. There are materials I want Jean says and Reiko, with that I have a request for father. Could you please improve my magic power detection function dot? 
HNIA, because it was hard for you to search for me. Okay, I'll do it immediately when we return with this, Reiko became even more of an absurd automata. Volume 1. Chapter 23, Return to the Laboratory. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. AA, it feels kind of nostalgic night, with Hannah and Martha asleep. Jean and the automata Reiko return to the Magi Craftmeister base, the research facility. It's bright even though it's night, there are magic lamps. Huh the important areas inside the research facility are furnished with magic lamps. And because the automata had been doing the maintenance all this time, the research facility's equipment were adequately functional. Because of that, the automata had passed its life of service, and had once collapsed in front of Jean. Jean then repaired it or rather remodeled it with magic into the current Reiko. Well then, to start with, shall I upgrade Reiko. Is that fine bot? A, I'll be in your care in the future after this. Lie down over there okay, thank you very much in the room Reiko was remodeled, Reiko laid on the same bench. I'll cut your magic power temporarily understood when the magic drive stopped, Reiko's operation smoothly stopped. Since Jean had already come up with an upgrade plan for Reiko in his head, he immediately collected materials. Okay, this looks good in the storehouse there was a large quantity of mana materials stored. From them there were two beautiful magic obsidian he picked out. Next he took out a magic quartz, two of them together for the eyes. To connect them, he wrote down a magic formula he devised. Alright, magic detection and life detection. Also long distance, magnification, night vision, see through once again by adding absurd features the upgrade was finished. Then again. Somehow, it feels like some parts have slightly deteriorated. I might as well reinforce it Jean felt that the joints of the arms and legs were slightly worn out. The light silver can't keep up with Reiko's power after all, I'll have to change it to light mithril the shape of the frame could be left as. Changing it to a stronger material, further coating it with a thin film of adamantite on the exterior. With this, the durability increased by many times. There was too much muscles because I was in a hurry that time. But I might as well take the opportunity to thin the strands of magic fiber to increase the number of them. With this the flexibility should increase and the durability should improve it was same as a wire rope, made by twisting together thin steel wire. I feel like this material wasn't here before, aa, it's the wing of the sham dragon Reiko had defeated. The magic skin is just perfect for skin Jean finished all of the upgrades he wanted to do in about 4 hours. Though the external appearance had not changed at all, the insides could be said to be powered up. Alright, Reiko, wake up. Dot. The magic drive restarted. She immediately woke up as there was enough magic power used this time. Father Reiko, how's your condition? Reiko got up and landed on the floor. For a little while, she moved little by little to check the condition of her body, it's very good. Thank you very much she says with a bow. I see, that's good. Then, we'll return to the village today when Jean said that, Reiko, eh. Weren't you going to come stay here? No, there's my promise with Hannah, and most importantly, there's no food or water here. From Jin's words, Reiko received some shock. T. That's right. Father needs to eat, and she felt down. While Jean was surprised that the automata grew such feelings, AA, because of that, we'll go back and forth between the village and here. You'll need to adjust to living in this environment. Okay, I'll do my best so using the warp gate. Jean and Reiko returned to Kana village. Jean quietly slipped into his own bed, with Reiko standing beside it. To that Reiko, Jean, hey, I'll feel restless if you stand there, but Reiko, however, this is because if something terrible were to happen to father. Also, it is unnecessary to concern yourself with me as I do not tire then, are the very least, please sit on the chair but, listen to what I say, understood after such an exchange, Jean finally got a short sleep. The next morning. Hannah came to wake up Jean who overslept due to going to the laboratory last night. But. Father is still sleeping she was obstructed by Reiko. Hannah, move. Because breakfast is ready I need to wake up Oni. Sean please let him sleep for a little longer the food is done. Dot. Lack of sleep is not good for his health if he doesn't eat, his stomach will be empty. Dot. So noisy of course he would have no choice but to wake up with all the noise being made at the bedside. A, it's morning, huh? 
Hannah, did you come to wake me up? Un, uh, for some reason Hannah looked at Reiko with a face of triumph. Reiko hanged her head. Jean got dressed and washed his face, then went to eat. Good morning, Jean. It's rare that you would oversleep. It was rare that the Jean, who was always an early riser, to oversleep, Martha said. Ee, -e, there were various things I did till it was a little late. Are you making something ogline? You really like to do that, because Martha knew Jean liked manufacturing things, with those few words it ended. After breakfast. Hannah left to the yard after helping with the dishwashing. And, there awaited Reiko. Hannah avoided Reiko and went towards the workshop Jean would be in but then, Hannah.Sean, please wait Reiko called out. What? I'm going to the place where my Oni.Sean is could I talk to you a little thought. I have nothing to say to someone like you Reiko held on to the cold Hannah, it goes without saying. I want to hear a story about father Oni.Sean. For matters regarding Jean, the Hannah who was about to leave stopped her feet. Yes. Father immediately disappeared after he rebuilt me, because he disappeared. Yesterday was the first time I talked with father so that's it. Because of that confession, Hannah though Reiko was a little pitiful. Hannah.Chan, because you've lived together with father for half a year, I think you know more about father than me. Therefore please let me hear a story with that said, Hannah's will to refuse was broken, and decided to start with the somewhat boastful story. The first thing is that I was the one to find Jean.Oniakin. When I went to the forest to pick up the leaves of the tea trees, Onii.Chan had collapsed when Onii.Chan saw me drawing the water, because it was difficult for me, he made a pump for me. Because he made a bicycle trailer for me, carrying the water became easier. He made me a tool to sift the wheat so that I could eat delicious bread. For the stove, it has become easier to make meals. There is no need for firewood he made me a ball and handball, and also played a game of tag with me. Onii.Chan is really kind he made the golems gone and Jen, and also made my Mr. Horse, Mint, for me. It's really fast. Dot. The chronological order was disconnected, but from the fervent speech displayed by Hannah, she could hear that Jean cherished Hannah. Is that so? Father seems to take good care of Hannah.Chan so, those words spontaneously spilled from the mouth of Reiko. I guess, so yes. That is so. Yesterday I was finally able to see father and had him finally repair my body that was in bad condition really. Dot. Hannah, who had been almost hogging Jean to herself, started feeling a little guilty once she knew that Reiko had been alone for a long time. Re, ght. Reiko at one would be lonely if she couldn't meet Onii.Chan. I would be too, Hannah recalled that she was lonely after losing her parents, up until she met Jean. I'm sorry. Somehow, it felt like Reiko at Wunshin was going to take Jean and Oniakin away, then Reiko gently caressed Hannah's head. It's okay. Last night, father had said it. There's my promise with Hannah.Chan promise, he would stay in the village until spring, Jean told her that. I see, so Oniai.Chan said that. Dot. Hannah's face brightened, to her Reiko, Hannah.Chan, would you become friends with me, said holding out her hand. Hannah stared at that hand for a little bit and eventually returned a firm grasp with both hands, un. Reiko.Wunchen is my friend. My best regards, Wunny.Chan yes. Hannah.Chan Jean smiled while quietly watching the situation between the two in the shadows of the workshop. Volume 1. Chapter 24, Made. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. The night of the next day, once again he transport to the research facility. Jean looked around the room, with this vast research facility, it'll be inefficient with just Reiko when Jean said that, Reiko, there were made golems when mother was alive, but she suspended them because there was no use for them after dying. Ah, uh. Is it fine if I rebooted them? Dot? That's fine. Do you wish to check on them? Dot? Saying that, Reiko led Jean to a room underground. Here they are Yuwa, there laid the body of about 20 female-type golems. But, the majority of them were decayed and damaged on some part of their bodies. These have been damaged quite a bit different from the automata. If a golem did not have magic power circulating inside its body to run, it would quickly deteriorate. Making new ones would be faster that is right, I apologize for my negligence it's fine. Could you carry one of the bodies that isn't damaged to use as a reference to? 
Yes, leave it to me Reiko has the five times the strength of a normal adult. Therefore she was easily able to lift the golem and carry it to the workshop. UVE really helped. For some reason I don't even gain a single bit of muscle by training Jean casually uttered and Reiko, father, have you not noticed it yet? Dot? Reiko asked him with a puzzled look on her face. Ed. Dot? Because father's body was mostly supplemented with magic power, the current basic condition is maintained so you're saying that no matter how much I train, I won't gain any muscles. Dot? Yes, what a thing, certainly, Jean was convinced by comparing it with his knowledge. Simply put, Jin's body consists of chunks of magic elements. Hmm. They why do I feel thirstiness? Dot? Because the body's functions remain intact, so water and nourishment are needed a, I see. Hmm. Then what about body enhancement type magic? Dot? In engineering magic, there is the body enhancement type. He might need it in the case he required strength for making something big. In the case for father, there's not much meaning to it that's true certainly. He had tried using body enhancement magic before in Kana village, but there was no effect because it was not Jin's original body, so Jean believed he could not use it on himself. Rather than enhancing the body with magic, I think that activating the magic power in the body would be far more efficient for such an idea. It was something difficult for Jean as he was still not familiar with the thing called magic. I see, activating the magic inside the body. Was there such a magic dot? Yes. However, because mother could create several new engineering magic, father should also be able to I see. I'll try it bit by bit. First of all though is this golem in order to clear up what was before him, Jean returned his focus to the golem. The material, is it perhaps brass dot? Yes. Mother had already prepared a good amount to work with it was rusted and black. He could see that there was copper rust on some parts of the golem, and so he decided without using analyze. Un, it's brass. It would be better if it were cupernical if I were to choose cupernical. What kind of thing is that? Dot? Reiko asked about Jin's words. When Jean transferred his knowledge to Reiko, he did not transfer everything, so it was a natural question. Cupernickel is an alloy of of copper and nickel. It has a better corrosion resistance than brass and its movement is natural because it is soft the 50 yen coin and 100 yen coin are made of cupernickel. The new 500 yen coin is made of nickel brass as nickel. What kind of thing is that dot? Another thing that Reiko didn't know. In other words, the predecessor did not know it either. Hmm. There was a lot piled up in the storehouse the other day Jean said, taking Reiko along to the underground storehouse. It should be here there laid a mountain of silver dot gray ingots. So that is nickel. It certainly remained an unidentified metal after the arsenic was separated arsenic, scary arsenic aside, he had the piled nickel moved. Of course together with the copper. Mix 75 copper to 25 nickel he made an alloy with fusion. The red copper changed to a silver color. So this is cupernickel. Certainly, it's a white copper brass is 60 or 70 copper to 40 or 30 zinc. So the red copper turns into a yellow brass, but with about 10% of nickel it becomes whitish. Using these materials, I'll make a golem golems and automata have one thing that is different which is their structure. While automata are not completely like a human, they have a frame and skin, and on the other hand, a basic golem is made of materials and a core. However the predecessor Magi Craftmeister, Adriana Balbora CC, did not make such a simple golem. Even the eyes use magic crystal yes. Mother liked to change the colors the magic attribute the magic crystal has changes with color. Though Jean did not know that before he rebuilt Reiko. Alright, well then, is red, blue green, yellow, and purple about right dot. I think it's excellent. I will immediately go collect them red has a strong fire attribute, blue has a water attribute. Green has a wind attribute and yellow an earth attribute. As for purple, it has a lightning attribute. Jean used the original golem as a reference, making the five bodies using cupernickel. The inside is hollow, so ribs are used to reinforce it. Jean was devastatingly bad at designing a face, so he had them look like the original golem. He planned to distinguish them with their eye color and clothes. Sorry for the wait, father. 
It took some time to find ones that were a good size to use as eyes I was just about done with the bodies here too he put the eyes into the five golems made of cupernickel. Of course after he carved a magic formula on them. Okay, all that's left is the golem's core along with carving a magic formula in the golem's core. He poured in his magic power into those cores for them to operate. He further put in the Magi Craftmeister, Adriana Balbora CC's Ether Converter and Magic Drive, developing a semi-permanent operating golem, Thgon, Jen, and the two other horse golems also had this. The core was a milky white magic crystal. It had all attributes. The rainbow dot colored ones that Reiko used were a higher grade crystal with all attributes, and the milky white one was a lower grade. Although it still had enough value to build a mansion. Other small details were improved. Because completing it in three hours that night was impossible, he worked and played in Kana Village during the day, coming back to the research facility at night to work on it for about three hour. And like that, several days passed and the made golems were made. Evening of the fifth day. It's now complete when Reiko said that, Jean, no, not yet at all. After all I'll feel restless if I look at them without clothes when Jean said that. Reiko knit her eyebrows, Father, have you perhaps grown tired of me? Perhaps due to the influence of Hannah, Jean vaguely felt she was full of emotions. Why did it come to that? It's simply a problem of appearance is that so? I'm relieved saying that, Reiko ran off to get the materials for clothes, and looking at her from behind, Jean muttered a few words, Please don't become a yandera, simple underwear, black one piece, and a white apron dress and also said to be the symbol of a maid, the white brim, headdress. Jean made one first, then Reiko immediately finished making the same thing enough for five people. Fuh, we're finally finished thanks for the good work, father okay, well then, activate the five maid golems got up. Nice to meet you, master the five all bowed together. Alright, then your names will be, let's see, Ruby, Aqua, Topaz, Peridot. Amiza he named them to match the color of each of their eyes. For Jean, this was quite decent. Reiko, I'll be going back to sleep, but you should remain here for a little more and teach and appoint them their share of work yes. Father please treat us well, Oju at Sama the golems must unconditionally abide to those with the magic power of Jean, and they recognized that Reiko with the same magic wave was a superior existence. Anyway, with this the labor shortage in the research facility was slightly resolved and it was decided to proceed to the indoor maintenance. Volume 1 Chapter 25 The Broken Promise You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. The season was now completely winter, and snow could be seen falling on the mountain from Cana Village. It is a plateau, but the precipitation from the taller mountains that surrounded the village was little. He understood that the rain and snow that fell from the surrounding mountain was damp. The snow won't fall if it piles up like that because Jean more or less grew up in the city, he especially yearned to make a snow hut, but it was impossible in this village. Come to think of it, Roland at San hasn't show lately, though the merchant Roland promised to come once every month and a half, the time to come had long passed, but he did not show up. It's hard to believe that an honest in nature merchant would break a promise. One day, a person that was not Roland visited Cana village. Jean.Oniakin, Oba.Chan is calling for you. Jean, who was making a stove using magic stone in the workshop, stopped his hands and went to the house. Jean.San, it's been a while there stood the tax collector, it was Lithia Fallheit. Lithia.San, it's been a while. You seem to be well when Jean greeted her, Lithia, s sorry, she said, bowing her head. Not understanding what was going on, Jean, wa, Lithia.San, please raise your head for now. I don't understand what you're talking about then Lithia raised her head with a remorseful look on her face. For the matter regarding the golems, I was unable to keep it hushed, at dot. One of the soldiers who was stationed at Toka village seems to have talked about it upon returning to the capital. This was bad for Jean. At the time he was transporting the wheat, the golem that Jean reconstructed was seen by the villagers and soldiers of Toka village. Lithia could not stop one mouth, and that person's mouth was not closed. The rumors quickly circulated to the capital. According to Lithia's story, the rumor was that a golem appeared near Toka village, and the rumors that the person who used that golem was there reached the king. The king decided to order the prime minister to verify the authenticity of it. 
the Prime Minister careful investigated the rumor, determining that the person who used the golem was Jean who lived in Cana village. And also that Jean was the developer of the pump that was spreading around the capital in addition to creating the stove, that is popular with the commoners. The king seemed to feel that Jean was a threat when he heard that, ordering the lord that governed the area that included Cana village and Toka village, Earl Walter to bring Jean to him. Now aiming for this village, 50 troops of the Earl are heading here, so please quickly run away. Lithia concluded. Jean, to Martha who had a worried look, it's okay. It doesn't mean it's a particularly bad thing Jean.San, saying such a thing in this situation, wouldn't running away seem rather suspicious. Jean said to reassure them, but he was secretly a little anxious. Lithia gave up on convincing him, Jean.San, being a magic craftsman who can control and create a golem is precious, but it is regarded as a danger if they are not affiliated with the country. So please be careful thank you Lithia.San. I'll be careful although with that said, he did not know what to be careful of. For now, he decided to go back to the workshop to consult with Reiko. In the worst case, we may need to run away if that's the case, it's probably better if we do not use the warp gate. We better make the one here unusable un, regrettably immediately, they covered the basement where the warp gate is, to the extent they could not return even if they know the entrance. You are Jean right. An oppressive voice sounded from the entrance of the workshop. He could see a troop of soldiers covered in armor standing. It was faster than he thought. Ee, -e, I am Jean, so dot. When Jean answered, the man who seemed to be the commander, Fudan, were here to take you bastard. I will show no mercy if you resist he said thrusting out a spear. Jean gently held it down, what are you talking about so suddenly dot? Saying that, the man who seemed to be the commander, bastard, do you intend to defy the lord that governs this area, me Earl Walter dot? No, therefore, why exactly am I being taken dot? To this point, Jean finally understood why Lithia said it was too late to escape. Fu dot n, the king's orders. Obediently obey this country seemed to be different from what he thought from what he determined when he talked to Lithia about the tax rates. The man in front of him was the type of man to misuse the authority he is given. I'm not a person particularly from this country. So I don't have the obligation to obey do I dot. Gradually Jin's anger rose. Jean wasn't particular a noble character, rather he could be said to be short-tempered. He may be sweet to relatives and friends, but he would not forgive those who harm those relatives and friends. Onyai. Chan dot. Hannah tries to run over, but her small body is intercepted by a soldier. No, she was pushed away, falling onto her back. Kaya dot. Hannah dot. A spear was thrust out before Jean to obstruct him, however. Out of my way Jean grabbed the spear and used forming. The spear quickly deformed into a U. Nah. The spear dot. Bastard. You dare disobey dot. A further three spears were thrust out. The one to stop them was the golem gone. It came rushing back from its patrol of the village when it felt its master Jean in danger. Nah. This golem. You bastard, so you were the culprit after all. Dot. Culprit. Dot. Holding Hannah in his arms, Jean asked back with a puzzled face. Don't pretend you don't know. Golems have been making attacks all over the kingdom right now, you're the cause of it you bastard. Dot. Ha! <laughs> dot. It was a bad thing, as the appearance of Gon and Jen had not changed much from the time they attacked Jean and the others. Although the color was changed, the design was mostly the same. You still plan on pretending. I've seen it once before, there should be those among the soldiers who have too. Though the color is different, it's the same form of golem that has been attacking people and materials all over the place what dot. Jean recognized that the situation here had become the worst possible. Someone, or something, was using golems to attack all over Klein Kingdom. The golem before gone also seemed to be one of them. Ground, I should have investigated it a little more that time, although it may be too late. If he examined the core of the golem, he might have an idea of who the culprit is. It's no use making any more excuses. Dot. The soldiers surrounded Jean. Towards Hannah who was held in Jin's arms, Hannah, I have not done anything bad. 
However, it seems I can't stay here anymore now Oni.chan, until spring, was the promise, I'm sorry I couldn't keep it. Someday, I'll come back to see you. Until then, take care once he finished saying that, he secretly slipped a ruby, into the pocket of Hannah's skirt. And then a single word, Reiko. Yes, father hearing Jin's voice, the loyal and unmatched automata Reiko blew away the ten soldiers that surrounded Jean in the blink of an eye. Nah, bastard, so you're disobeying. Dot. Towards the flustered Earl Walter, Jean, listen, I have not done things like attacking with my golems. However, I will take my leave here as I do not intend to be charged with a crime I did not commit saying that he handed Hannah over to Martha, calling over the golem horse coma, and mounted it. Rako had got on ahead of Jean. Also another word of warning. Dare to even touch a single finger of the people of Cana village. I'll crush Klein Kingdom and then twisting the handle, Martha.san, I'm indebted to you, take care. After saying that, Earl Walter and the soldiers were taken aback and glanced back, when he then began to run towards the mountain to the north. Gon and Jen also followed after. W, what are you bastards doing? Chase. Chase him. However the feet of the golem was quick and they grew smaller into the distance. Even so, the soldiers chased after them. Earl Walter also chased with an ordinary horse. Oni.chan, Jean, Jean.san, Hannah, Martha, and Lithia remained, each praying for Jin's safety. Volume 1. Chapter 26, After That. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Jean fled to the mountains, guided by Reiko, they headed towards the cave that hid the warp gate. This is the place it was a good location with an overlook of the base of the mountain. Jean looked out over Kana village, even though it was a comfortable place to live, it is regrettable after saying that, Gon and Jen were the first to be transported. They were somehow able to cram the golem horse coma into the cave and it was also transported. Remaining were Jean and Reiko. Now then, because they saw us run away this way, it would be bad if we don't make this unusable that is right Kai. When would we be able to go to Kana village after that I will help Reiko followed up. Un, right. Then, have it break one minute after we use it so the warp gate is not misused, they added those functions as default. After it was set, Jean, then, let's go yes, and then the two figures disappeared. Damn it, so they escaped Z, 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 a plenty one hour after Jin's group disappeared, Earl Walter's group finally reached the summit. Already without a trail, with the weather of snow fluttering down, Earl, there isn't much to do here. We should withdraw before it gets dark, so the adjutant advised, it can't be helped, let's go back muttering his bitterness. Earl Walter and his troops descended the mountain, giving a glance to Cana village, and headed directly towards the capital. So this laboratory is on an island Jean returned to the laboratory, and was guided outside by Reiko. The climate was warmer than Kana village. It was not enough to call it a jungle, but there is decent rain. It would be self.sufficient if I cultivated it to cultivate the field was what Jean thought. But that is still far ahead. There was something more important. Look for something I can eat from things like trees understood, Goshijin.sama Reiko, and the five golem maids split up their work. For now he would secure some food. About over two hours, four kinds of fruits and two kinds of nuts were found. Also, there also seemed to be what looked like a rubber tree. After confirming it was not poisonous with analyze, he immediately tasted them. Un, this is sweet and delicious. This one is bittersweet. As for this, it's sweet but a little dry. This is sour each fruit had a taste close to peach, orange, apple, and lemon. The nuts were similar to a walnut and a Japanese chestnut. It looks like I'll be able to somehow eat. Well then, collect 20 of each fruit and about 10 kilograms of each nut ordering the golem maids, Jean went back to the res each facility. Y-O-U fool dot. In the capital of Klein Kingdom, Earl Walter received a reprimanding from King Alois III after returning to report. I was going to have that person Jean to serve the kingdom when he was brought here. And to treat him like a criminal. Finally getting angered, he escaped. What if he goes and serves another country? M. My deepest apologies, H. However, that person could control a golem, so he may have been a harm to our country I've already received reports for that. 
Jean captured that golem with a never-before-seen magic and rebuilt it to obey him no way to. With this, Jin's innocence was proven as Lithia had quickly returned to capital to fix the incident with her report. In doing so, she was to be reprimanded for hiding the truth, but as Jean had asked her and reporting Jin's true strength that was seen personally by Lithia, it was written off. And so the king and prime minister wanted Jean who was a talented individual. It is fine now, go back. From now on it is prohibited to meddle around with Kana village. Understand. Ha! <laughs> if they were to provoke Jean who ran away any further, there was a possibility he might become their enemy. Thinking about the true strength he heard from Lithia, he thought to avoid that. It seems it didn't turn out well, Klein Kingdom's king, Alois III gazed up to the sky and heaved a sigh when he was alone. Onii.chan, every morning, and every time she drew the water from the pump, Hannah remembered Jean. Since then, Earl Walter returned by passing through the village and did not retaliate at all. Martha and the entire village were worried about Jean who fled to the mountain. He, besides him there's Reiko.chan and they're riding the horse, so they'll be fine rock made that statement. Because the villager did not know about the warp gate, they thought Jean was hiding in the mountains. And sometimes, they went searching for Jean in the mountain with the remaining golem horses, but of course there was no result. Then one day, Lithia visited the village. Oya, Lithia.sama, what is it? Dot? The village chief who met her asked Lithia who had a cheerful face. Be delighted, the suspicions on Jean.san have been cleared e. Dot. And directly from the king, as an apology for this misunderstanding, he invited Jean to the capital and wanted Jean to serve him. In that case, it was guaranteed that the lowest position he would be given would be royal magic craftsman Ho. That's amazing. Dot. The village chief was impressed. The royal and royal magic craftsmen to begin with, correspond with the treatment of nobility. So, where is Jean. San. Dot? That is, there's been no news from him since then is that so, although they were honestly glad that Jean was recognized, the villagers of Kana village could only be half glad as the main person Jean remained missing. Volume 2 Chapter 1, Glider Golem You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Before you know it, a new year begins in this world, and Jean was unaware of it. I've had enough day after day, all Jean ate were fruits and nuts. Ah, I want to eat cooked rice. Bread would be fine too of course he would have enough of eating, he missed his former diet. Is there somewhere I can buy wheat? Dot? If that's the case, we can cultivate a field on this island, father for Jin's mutter, Reiko proposed. Well there's that. We can buy the seeds, but the fields need to be prepared yes. For that, what if we left it to the golem maids Topaz and Aqua? Dot? Topaz has an earth attribute and Aqua has a water attribute. That sounds like a good idea Jean nodded in agreement. Reiko, well then, they will need golems to work for them aa, right? I guess I'll make them so it was decided that he would make five subordinate golems for the golem maids, Aqua and Topaz. Jean decided the specs together with Reiko. Without magic skin, they won't need clothes on, that's right. Instead, we'll plate the surface with light silver to change their colors. Ha! <laughs> Dot. Jean then explained to Reiko. Light silver is an isotope of titanium, and by adjusting the thickness of the oxide film on the surface of titanium, the color can vary. 1. This is knowledge Jean obtained from working in a factory, metal-related, on modern earth. Okay, I understand now. As expected of father, he immediately started making the golems. The basic form is the same as the golem maids. Though the structure was fairly simplified. The control system was particular. For now they had an autonomous intelligence and were adjusted to listen to not just each maid who were their superior, but Jean and Reiko on top of that. I'll make the body, so father, please take care of the ether converter, mana drive, and core all right. I'm on it they proceeded with sharing their work, Reiko doing the simple work while Jean did the key complex work. Two days later, five golems for each, with ten of them in total were completed. I think we should assign each golem made with a role agreeing with Reiko's suggestion, Jean, alright then. Topaz for land development. Aqua for water control. Peridot for housework. 
Ruby and Amizu for the island's defense, how is that dot? I think that is fine okay, then, Topaz, Aqua, Peridot, Ruby, Amizu. I've made subordinates for you. Please continue to work hard in the future. As for the subordinate golems, I leave them to you very well. Goshijin.sama we look forward to working with you the five golem maids bowed to Jean, and the subordinate golems first bowed to Jean, then bowed to the maid bosses. Topaz and Aqua went outside of the laboratory, and Peridot looked around each room. Ruby and Amizu also went outside, together with the subordinates. Then Reiko, father, there are still two left, what are they had asked, seeing the body of two golems that had yet to activate. A, these are subordinates for Reiko. From now on, Reiko will be busy with various things, so I made you subordinates my subordinates. A. They should have the same performance as the golem maids. But their appearance is different right, the bodies of the two golems still lying down were petite, being about the same size as Reiko. I want to link them to Reiko before we activate them. How about it dot? They are something father kindly made while thinking about me, therefore I have no objections she says that with a somewhat happy look. Seeing that, Jean felt relieved. He had wondered did I do something unnecessary to, and how to persuade her if something was said about it. I see, then come over here, mana linkage, okay, it's done, activate dot. The bodies of the two golems got up. One body was gold, the other was silver. Nice to meet you, father, Waniyatsama the golems made their greetings. Of course the Waniyatsama thing is about Reiko. Yes, nice to meet you. Father, what are their names? Dot. UNN, let's see, since they are Reiko's subordinates, how about Reiko names them? Dot. Reiko thought for a while when told that, I guess so, the gold one, you are Soleil, the silver one, you are Luna it was much more decent than Jean. Yes, I am Soleil yes, I am Luna with this, the labor shortage is considerably resolved, and Jean decided to continue working on solving the problems. Reiko, even if it's effective to use this island, I can't do much without knowing the topography. Do we not have a map dot? Reiko had a slightly troubled face when asked that, that is, things have changed considerably from the time mother was here, therefore you'll need to remake a new one Reiko said that it seems to have risen during the past 1000 years. I see, then understanding the whole bird's eye view of the island is urgent folding his arms, Jean pondered. The survey can be done much later, but I want to know the topography and size, taking an aerial photo would solve it in one go, however there is still no means to fly in this world. Jean continued to ponder, I know. Reiko, please help me for a little bit coming up with some kind of idea, Jean headed to the workshop. What are you doing father? Dot. To the puzzled Reiko, Jean, I want to roughly understand the topography of the island by surveying it from the sky. For that purpose, I'm creating a golem to fly in the sky t, the sky dot. Even Reiko was surprised about it. The predecessor didn't think about such a thing. Un, well, although I say fly in the sky, it's just gliding after launching with magic simply put, a glider. He made a model glider, a golem which would survey the ground while gliding and would produce a map after it returns. That was the process. For now, he decided to reduce it to a roughly decent scale. I understand what you said, but will it really fly in the sky? Dot. Since only a partial amount of Jin's knowledge was transferred, Reiko was dubious about it. Un, well, seeing it for yourself is better than hearing about it, let's try it out with that said. He created one glider with light silver, equipped with a core of a golem, and a magic crystal was equipped to ensure vision. Though the core is small, the movements are operated using the elevator, rudder, and aileron, too. It was shortly completed. So this will fly. Dot. A. Just look, Jean also left the laboratory to perform a flight test of the glider golem on the open front yard that Topaz and Aqua had already prepared. Okay, I'm throwing it, it lightly pushed forward first. The glider glided straight ahead, landing after flying about 50 meters. It really flew, Reiko seemed to be deeply moved. Though it didn't really show on her face. By repeating this several times, he memorized how to control the glider golem. And finally, it was time for the real thing. Reiko yes, father throw this up with all the power you've got with all of Reiko's power, it would easily reach 3 kilometers in the sky. Understood Reiko got into a throwing stance. 
Glider Golem, go survey the appearance of the island and memorize it. Then come back here at the same time Gene gave his instructions, here I go. Ray go through the Glider Golem with full power. In the blink of an eye, it soared to a high altitude and was no longer visible to the naked eye. How is it? Dot? Jean asked Reiko who could still see it. Yes, it is still rising. Still. Ah. Uh. It's begun gliding. It is slowly descending. The glider golem landed in front of the laboratory two hours after that. The map of the image of the island stored in the core of the golem was completed the next day.